see the Z Freak Earth Spirit. We've seen this a few times uh, in this tournament, but coming in full force here, especially getting this hero versus Tinker. If Z Freak can put on a show for us, he didn't have the worst Scarath Mage in that previous game, but seeing him on a hero that can finally go in, I'm very excited. Yeah, and takes us back to the point we were sort of talking about as well in terms of pushing the pace. The Earth Spirit is one of those pause for heroes that does that so incredibly well. Always a threat to sort of jump in across multiple sections of the map. So very excited to see if Z Freak does live up to that sort of aggressive potential while Undying are going to come in for the Mars pick with that third selection. So getting themselves a bit of a frontline fighter, getting themselves some more team fight and lockdown to work with. Of course, the Mars will have to be a little bit careful, should be aware of where the Omni Knight is in most situations, but still going to be a solid pick for Undying and now the Grimstroke out for them as well. Yeah, and fantastic pickup. We actually saw Awesome Four Zoomers decide to run this Omni. They banned out the Grimstroke, so possibly a little bit of a hole here where I don't think you got Moon Meander caught off guard. I think he actually is on a hero that's going to feel really nice for him. Of course, this does mean that this Tinker might end up falling into Bryle's hands, something that maybe last patch you would have been able to call instantly, but nobody was first phasing Tinker in that previous patch. And this is flipping the script a little bit here, where now you're going to have a little bit more farm on the Tinker. We've seen the core Tinker succeed, I think, a little bit less. The hero definitely feels more geared towards that 3-4 position. Mm -hmm. But now you have Mars Grimstroke. Now you have a hero that plays fantastically versus Omni Knight. Grimstroke is one of the few heroes where that Ink Swope, you can't do anything about it if you're Omni. You have to sit there. You have to be close to your allies. It's the direct counter. It's the direct punishment. I just hope that they don't fall into this trap. We saw the last time this Omni Knight was played versus Mars, where every single spear immediately countered out by that Omni Knight repel. And you need to be very cautious with these team fights. Saberlight needs to be very careful with his spears, because at the same time, we saw maybe one or two times in that game, if you can get the Omni Knight outside of your arena, that is perfect. That is how you want to start these fights. But if Husky is literally sitting on top of Envy just to get those very easy Heavenly Graces, that's where the Grimstroke's going to come into play. That's where you're going to have that immediate soulbind. I think maybe the Mars Grimstroke is the solution that Undying actually need to put this Omni Knight in the dirt. And that's where this Batrider will make things a little bit hairier. We've seen this Batrider completely carry games. We saw yesterday No Ping pull one out of the bag. Dark Mago Batrider absolutely owned. He was completely running over the entire enemy team. And right now... All of Undying's heroes are pretty susceptible to being run over. I do wonder where they're going to now put this position-wise, if we are going to see now Moobit get put on that West rack, and then seeing that Batrider go mid. We don't really see the Batrider offlane as much anymore, but maybe with the slight sticky Napalm buffs, we could see a little bit more leeway in that term. But now, carry bans, everything's off the board. We're going to have to see what both these carry players are going to play, because now the pool is very thin. The meta is out at this point. Mm-hmm. There are always some heroes that they could try to look for from the previous patch that have still kind of carried over, but it's going to be interesting at least. And Undying in particular, uh, they have pretty much no time. Their reserve pool is actually empty, so they've got to go right now. And we do see the pick come out, and the Weaver. Not the most yeah. durable, but high damage, high mobility. Yeah, and it is a little bit strange to see in that previous patch, we only really saw Weaver whenever it was into the Coddle, it was into the Lion, it was into heroes that you can get those bugs on in their safe lane and then your five is strong enough to set up a kill with you. But now it definitely feels uh, a little bit strange picking it into both Omni and Earth Spirit. There isn't that very uh, simple target in the early game that I'm finding for Tomato to hit. Although you did have a very nice quality of life change, you can now use that Geminate attack to orb block. You don't get aggroed by the creeps. In addition to that, you can toggle it. You never have to feel like you're committing it to those creeps. So you are going to see, I believe, this offlane feel under a little bit more pressure, at least a little bit more direct pressure, especially it being a double range versus what I can only assume is going to be Batrider or Lesh coming into this offlane. And is that a safe lane Bloodseeker I see? Think it yeah, might. it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Envy's going to mix it up a little bit. And, well, talked about the Weaver. High damage, high mobility. But against a Bloodseeker, that could kind of mess with that plan a little bit. Your Weaver's mobility is now suddenly something that can be turned against you. That is, of course, assuming that your Bloodseeker is hitting that Rupture onto the Weaver. But you got to assume Envy's going to be looking for that target just about every single time. So, 
I don't know. Position 1 Bloodseeker, we don't really see it get pulled out all too often, but it certainly makes an interesting case here. Yep, yeah, and direct counter pick. This is the power of last pick. We're going to see this time and time again. The team with last pick is going to get some leg up in your matchup where with the previous drafting style, we didn't really feel that power. We didn't feel like you could actually get away with it. But now Tomato is going to be have to he's going to have to be very careful with how he commits, how he shows in these fights. Fortunately for Undying, Mars is pretty adept at dealing with that Bloodseeker. You're playing very high up in those waves. You're always going to take a lot of damage from those Mars spells, as well as now Moomiander slotting into that Grimstroke, just like we said. That's a dangerous lane for Eternal Envy to exist in, and not being on a Strength Hero, you're not going to get the entire effect coming in from that Heavenly Grace. Even though I do like what they've got here, for Zoomers, they've got a very similar lineup where they need to get ahead in these lanes. I think Undying, they're saying, our lineup's worse, but once we get a few items, we are going to play just a little bit better than you. And that's what they've really banked on pretty much their entire run. They're 42 and 11 right now in their team's history. They really haven't skipped a beat after uh, getting knocked down that one time from four Zoomers way back when. They've really just kept the momentum up. If there was ever a game for them to lose, I think this is a pretty good case for it. I think this is a very free Batrider game. I think they have the direct counter to now hold down Tomato. They just need to execute, 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 execute. And then I think we could finally see a really good game of Dota. Yeah, but the thing, oh, bit of a pause coming out there. The thing is, we were saying a little bit of the same stuff back in game one, that four Zoomers would have to be aggressive. They'd have to set the pace. They need to sort of put Undying on the back foot because uh, much like in game one, yeah, if you let that opposing lineup get a little bit too much time and a little bit too much speed underneath them, you are suddenly working at a bit of a disadvantage. Last time they weren't able to really do it. I feel like this lineup, though, is built in a manner that I think gets them to that spot, that aggressive potential, that little bit faster. But ET, as you mentioned, it's so much about how they execute that game plan. We can talk about the theoretical power till the cows come home, but they've got to actually make it happen. And uh, right now we actually need Bryles, I believe you said it was his mouse, uh, is giving him mm -hmm. some issues. So not quite ready to go just yet. But yeah, four Zoomers... Comparatively speaking, I think in a better position to do what they want to now compared to where they were last time, but it is still going to be a mix of timing and execution that has to be on their side. And the one thing that they are missing in this draft is just those hard stuns. They really are going to be very reliant on Z-Freak having an amazing game. Same with the Batrider always getting those plays going with those lasso. And that's what I think Undying as a team, they are so good at realizing and identifying what their opponents are lacking and then changing their game plan based on what that is. So I wonder if we're going to see across the board a shift because right now for Zoomers, they've got three stuns. They have to get a Yule Scepter. They have to get something a little bit more. And they weren't able to pick up that hero that I was looking for to sit in front of the Leshrac. We're probably going to see Moo go for a little bit of a tankier build because they are missing that hero. And that's where their game plan, it will feel a little bit risky. They need to hit these stuns. They need to get something going. Where if Undying, they're just allowed to farm. They've got Weaver. They've got Tinker. They've got these heroes that scale incredibly well. At the If we really go down to Brass Tacks, they even have the Grimstroke uh, Dark Portrait going into that late game if they really needed to think about it too hard. I just really want to see a nice clean game coming from four Zoomers because I think they can take something off it. Undying are just so good at realizing what their enemy team lacks. Here we go. And the smoke play will get them all the way around. They run into Saberlight first. Roll forward, connecting onto Moon Meander. They're going to hit him up with the Split Earth as well, and that's going to be a relatively easy first blood play for them. Nice aggression coming out from the four zoomer side. Exactly what we wanted to see from them early. They need to set that tempo, create uh, the pace of play that that's going to benefit good. them, and really prevent Undying from creating much early on for the likes of Tomato uh, and Bryle. So they have to strike fast and hard. They do exactly that, and now... As everybody sort of passes their way by mid, we do see those wards getting thrown down, but... First Blood, going their way, you know, it's it's still just the one kill, but... Just from a morale standpoint, I would think, four Zoomers really did kind of need that. They also know as well exactly where the ward is. I think Dubu, Dubu and Gunner are going to play footsie here on the Observer Ward just a little bit. Everybody knows the sentry is down. We all know the sentry is there. Oh, nice did get the deny, though, and there's the rolling onto Dubu. Husky's even coming in. This is a lot in the middle lane at the 15 second mark but yeah you burn through a little bit of that regen on dubu he now has a longer trip back down to the bottom lane so it was worth a shot at least and 
And with that, we do settle into the actual laning stage itself. Dubu making his way down bot. He and the uh, Tinker actually going to lane up here. So yeah. they do send Tomato mid. Hmm. Okay. We'll see how that works out. But this is a matchup I don't really think we could have anticipated down in the bottom lane. When was the last time you had safe lane Tinker versus off lane Lesh? And I do think it is because Brian's Tinker is going to be the best on his team. And I think Tomato should be fine in that mid lane. Really, Batrider isn't a hero that everybody needs to be too concerned laning against, especially getting that wand so early isn't going to be that big of a problem. Once he has a few more levels up in the Skikuchi as well, you can never really kill this Weaver. Of course, I say that. I do feel in the back of my mind that maybe Tomato would let a kill happen to Gunner. Gunner's just that good. Maybe he knocks him back with the Flame Break, but Tomato should be able to have more or less a farm fest where you have now avoided the matchup. I think Brow definitely would have struggled a lot more with the Tinker versus Bat matchup. It's just not something you would have wanted to see coming out from them. So sort of a soft answer coming in from them. Yeah, and Brile, uh, you already see down bot, he and Dubu, they're really going at Moo, hitting him up with the missiles that he grabbed at level one. So your Leshrac is often not really used to getting sort of outranged early on, but those missiles keep on coming in onto him. Meanwhile, up top, there's going to be the move in from Saberlight and Moonmeander. They do hit up Husky, basically ignoring Envy. I think Saberlight even kind of just ate the damage uh, from that level one blood right, but it's not really enough. Husky is a strength here. Obviously, he's a little bit tanky, but can't survive the full sort of onslaught as Undying get their first kill on the board. And I think this is the way that they're going to have to play this lane ET. Don't really know that they have too much to go directly onto the Bloodseeker, so Husky kind of seems like the more obvious target. And that's where they do need to reactively switch their targets. Of course, if they take Husky out of the fight, you're not going to see that purification. You're not going to see that Heavenly Grace. It's very difficult for them to make a play on the fellow laner paired with that Omni. But you are going to see Saberlight have a very free time. Every single time Envy walks into this creep wave, he eats at least two or three spells. Of course, he's Bloodseeker, so he is able to take that aggression in stride. We'll just regen it up, especially if he's able to pull the creeps back like he is. But this does give a very free time over to Saberlight. We're going to see him have that very early level six, have those very early uh, item timings that sometimes we do see the Mars struggle with, but he should have a very free one this time around. Yeah, not a whole lot to sort of push him out of the lane unless maybe he makes some sort of positional mistake, but that's going to be a little bit concerning. 4-4 four, four zoomers, obviously three minutes in, you're not pushing that panic button just yet, but gotta try and sort of keep those opposing heroes down as best as you can but if Saberlight's able to have a relatively free time then he is going to be good to go hitting that level six relatively early and meanwhile on the other side of the map z freak that was very aggressive and he is going to get turned back pretty quickly but Moo trying to take advantage of the opening pushing in himself he does throw down the stun as well as the edict but with both of those spells only being level one they're not able to get the kill but you do like to see this from Z Freak. They picked up this Earth Spirit to try and play a bit more up tempo. You do not grab this hero if you're not going to be aggressive. So he's trying to make some plays, trying to get charges up on that urn. He got that so quickly on the Earth Spirit. So if he can take further advantage of that, obviously you're in a better spot, but you do need to be able to kind of hit the mark on some of these kill attempts. And that's the only issue with this buildup. I love it. I love the urn item. I see it sometimes built on carries because it does just feel fantastic. You want every single part of it. But if you are not finding these kills, you wish that maybe a part of you bought boots and two salves. Maybe you wish you could make more plays in Ryle. He's very far up, but... Roll in from Z Freak, getting him back into the action. I think he may have just killed himself, though. Oh, salve comes through. Not enough. Ryle gets the kill, and now Moo is going to be forced to fall back, so... It's a sneaky play at first. Moo's hiding out in the tree line, and you do get a nice initial sort of salvo onto Brile. The problem well, is... is oh, man. Well, the problem is they end up losing it, but there's that exact play we were sort of talking about. Gunner, he's just he's just too damn good sometimes. Gets the kill onto the Weaver. Tomato, I'm not really sure you should have been giving that play up, but that's just the skill that Gunner has. He just outplays him. Didn't even need the lasso for that. Yeah, I think Gunner just hits his level 6 a little bit faster than Tomato, and Gunner's got the knowledge. He's a mid laner. He knows how to play a lot of these matchups. He's spammed the games. That's one thing you can always be assured of with these mid laners. Yeah, top. They did try to go for it. Husky, though, was able to throw the Heavenly Grace down, so Envy has the Spear Stone removed and was able to outrun the Ink Swell. So, yeah, Husky can't do anything about the Ink Swell directly, obviously, but... 
Just trying to create that separation. If the Ink Swells hits, maybe Envy's still in trouble, but he's able to walk out of it. He's able to regen up some HP, but Saberlight and Moonman are, are just going to sort of keep trying this periodically. There's really not a whole lot in the way of consequences uh, if it fails outside of just not getting the kill. Envy and Husky can't exactly turn around right now and threaten their laning opponents directly. Yeah, really the only opportunity where you will see them go aggressively onto that Grimstroke is after the Ink Swell's already committed, after the stuns have already landed. That's where this Bloodseeker is very good, especially having those phase boots finished up already at running down supports without spells. Problem is, Moon's not giving it to you. He's been very measured. He's been very patient with his playstyle, even though he did uh, give up one death. Tactically, those deaths do feel pretty bad sometimes, but you're able to give a free courier ride to Saberlight. It really doesn't worry yourself too much as well as them just getting another draw lane if both of these players continue to get these draw lanes like we saw they're just able to put so much more pressure on the map when they just get anything and saberlight's going to make his way towards that level six and it feels like then you're going to see undying get much more aggressive on the map they're playing the waiting game they really do have the experience here this is so unfortunate for gunner uh bottled up that arcane rune started making his way but they sort of Detect that he's there. Brial TP'd out first. Gunner then reveals himself to the creep from the Chen. So then, Dubu just TP's out as well. And sure, you are presumably going to be giving up this tier 1 tower. But Gunner's purpose in this lane now really doesn't account for much. He doesn't really help out the push directly onto the tower. And I'm not really sure what more he can do. But Tomato just TP'd in. This is getting a lot more interesting. Gunner still holding onto that arcane. And. A well-placed lasso could turn into a rather spectacular fight for them as Tomato pushes forward. No detection for four zoomers right now, though, but Z-Freak's going to roll in. He does connect. Gunner, though, silenced up immediately, so he's not going to be able to drop that lasso just yet. As Tomato... Uh oh, Tomato! Oh, boy, he just time-lapsed into it. He's going to get stunned up. Now he really has no way out, as he'll just burn. Moo gets the kill. Moonmeander dead as well. That accidentally becomes a fantastic play for four zoomers. I'm not sure Gunner had any way of knowing that that's where that time lapse would have put the uh, the weaver but the second he recognizes it that's a freebie lasso goes down two kills and now they'll get the tower as well and i was much more worried about the bloodseeker showing up on him just moving through the lane that the weaver was in but you kill him without really anything coming in from envy and it's these early towers you get your first t1 eight minutes into the game the play is going to come mid you had to expend so little and because it was an arcane rune lasso you are going to have that up in another 39 seconds. The more T1 towers they can take away from Bryl, the slower his farm is, the less plays he has. And going forward, what I can only imagine is this Blink Dagger rush. You're going to output a lot of damage, but... Okay, Husky. Get on to Husky. Should be, be easy punished. kill. Yeah. Yeah. But at this point, they've kind of given up that initiation. Once they go into Husky, nobody's in a position to go for much of anything else. Although Gunner, got to be a little careful there. Firefly should keep him safe. He's actually got the regen rune, uh, not healing him up, but restoring that mana as well. But could still get locked down here. He's going to try and play it safe. Sends in that flame break to steal a couple of last hits, but not truly looking for any sort of second round of fighting. But you know, or just going to fall back. You see Envy farming up in the jungle, trying to take advantage of those stacks. So they are looking to maintain some efficiency here. Not quite out in front net worth wise, but... Oh, Envy's in a decent spot. Gunner's looking pretty good. Moo is maybe a little bit behind, but I think they kind of anticipated this when they sent him to that off lane. And you don't have that flashed farmer this time around. Envy is on a much slower burn hero, even though he is making his way towards that maelstrom. But if he can keep speed, he is going to be happy. Right now, he's just spamming out these neutral camps, doing whatever he can. I think going forward, Undying are going to be a lot more careful when it comes to these tower defenses, especially in this mid lane. And that's where you are going to see four zoomers bunch up. Fortunately, this time around, I do think that they can play a little bit more separated. I think that they can bide their time, play in two lanes at once instead of really sticking really everyone. Really pushing but in right now. Yeah, Husky. Saberlight oh. missing the spear, though. That's going to sort of complicate things. Tomato's still going forward, but at this point, Gunner is going to hit him up with the lasso again. And Tomato's just not tanky enough. He's dead before he even has the chance to pop the time lapse. And now... Undying after run. Saberlight drops down the arena defensively. He'll look to TP out. The rupture, not going to do any further damage, but Tomato cannot be the one sort of leading the charge on those fights. That's twice now that he sort of ended up getting into the range of Gunner with that lasso, and both times it leads to a pretty horrible series of events for Undying.
Yeah, and fortunately, it is in their jungle. It is in a situation where you aren't going to see immediate pressure put onto you, but 10 minute carts are here. You have to start nuking it out. They don't have lasso, so the dive is a little bit too difficult, I want to say. But with Tomato's build, I'm surprised he didn't actually finish off that Dragon Lance. If he has that Ogre Axe, he is alive. Nine times out of ten there. Instead, he's really greeting out for his Maelstrom, saying that I do need to be that farmer on my team. I am going to be the one that now needs to play opposite to Envy. And he isn't really too far behind the Bloodseeker at all, but still two deaths that you really don't want to give. Pretty much every death Tomato has had, actually, are deaths that really I don't think he's had to give up or has been pressured to. It's just been really good ward coverage coming in from four Zoomers and catching him off guard. I don't think he can afford another death, though. I think he really needs to be a little bit more careful. I don't think they can kill him bottom. I don't think Z-Freak has enough points in the silence to actually get a successful kill, but he might try anyway. Try for the roll. Nice silence pull. came through, but Tomato's able to get himself away. So, worth a try. Remind Tomato that you're there. Maybe push him directly or out of the lane directly into the jungle. So, just try and limit the farming opportunities that he has and... I don't know. If you're Tomato, as you mentioned, he's going after that Maelstrom still about 900 gold away from finishing that off, but the second gunner shows up, yeah. You have to start playing a little bit more cautiously. That lasso coming back up in just a few seconds, so really, if you're Tomato, you don't you don't want to be anywhere near this Bat Rider right now. Back off, finish off your item, and then we'll see what they can do later on, especially uh, with that Blink Dagger now finished off by Saberlight. That is going to open up so much for them. Saberlight really is as of right now, their best sort of initiating and teamfight hero. So we'll see what they can do with that. Maybe they can find some easy pickoffs, take down the supports once or twice, and try to build up a little bit of momentum and give more space over to Tomato and Brow to work with. And that's where, for four zoomers, I believe Gunner needs to have a fantastic BKB time here, but they're going on him. They just spotted this him. This is a big one. Spear into Inkswell, into Silence. Bryle gets the kill as well there with that laser. Perfect. Exactly what you wanted. Brow gets the kill. Killing spree comes to an end, so Gunner was worth even more gold than usual, and that smoke play gets Undying really everything that they wanted. Yeah, unfortunately, that is the timing that for Zoomers, that is what they're waiting for. If they don't have this BKB on the Batrider, they cannot make nearly as many plays as they could otherwise, and what I'm worried about is the downtime, where... Or Zoomers aren't making any plays. They're getting their opponents out of their lanes. They are being very efficient, but versus a team like Undying, I don't know if efficiently farming your side of the map is enough to actually get something done here. And that's where I am worried for them to fall in that same false sense of security where, sure, we're farming, sure, we're getting our items, but are we getting them actually fast enough? Because you're going to see this Tinker continue to get more and more speed. He's farming Ancients time after time. He's just immediately rushing that Aghanim Scepter. Once you see him get level 12, that's when this hero really becomes obnoxious and does need to be a little bit careful. He's getting thirsted just a little bit, but your item timings just come so quickly. We need this BKB from Gunner. I would be okay if they waited until that point, but we need to see these plays constantly made by four Zoomers. Otherwise, we're going to get into that same situation we saw in the previous game, and I don't think they want to end up there again. Yeah, and this is... A little bit like game one, unfortunately, we talked about them still needing to push the pace, but there's still two tier one towers remaining. Mu has not been able to sort of push out those lanes, take those objectives, and the kill count is maybe a little bit further ahead than it was at this point in the previous match, but not by enough, and not enough in Forzumer's favor. Although, as I say that, they are going to make the jump onto Moon Meander here. This should be a relatively easy kill for them to pick up. Moon, he's going to try to fight his way out of it, doing what damage he can, but... The creeps. He does get taken down. Trying to clean up those creeps as well. Yeah, they are going to be able to get at least one. But it looks like the rest of them are actually making their way out of there. So Dubu not losing too much of that army. And, well, I think Dubu's going to be okay. And now you sort of got to wonder, I, did he actually just go straight for the pipe? Hasn't actually finished it up. But he's he's got himself a hood. He's got the headdress. He's looking pretty good here in terms of the auras that he can Gunner. potentially provide. Man. His gunner just got knocked back. He's just loaded up now by the rebuke. Trapped inside of the arena. Where's the backup? Husky's trying to get in. Can he get there in time? He's going to try and heal his teammate up, but can't really do enough. Gunner will fall. Now that leash actually came through from the Soulbind. Tomato's in on the back line. This is getting so complicated for four Zoomers. Mu knocked back by the spear, trapped in the river. Z-Freak's going to try to roll forward as they turn the fight onto Bryle. They do manage to bring him down. That is going to be big for them, but they've still got to deal, oh god, with Tomato. But Tomato just lost about 80% of his HP off the back of the rupture. Didn't realize he was hit up by it as he pushed into the fight with the Shikuchi, and 
Tomato just runs himself to death. He was at least able to get the kill uh, onto Mu in exchange, but that was looking so good at the start for Undying. It still is a decent fight for them, but with Tomato and Ryle being taken down, that cost does get a little bit higher than I think they would have initially been comfortable with. And now Moon may end up falling as well. Silence comes out, though, so Gunner's not going to be able to keep this one going as the spear <laughs> nicely placed. Pushes Z-Freak back mid-roll. It's so clean, honestly, coming from Undying, watching them execute. But I think Brow got a little bit ahead of himself there. He had the Tumblr's toy as well. So having him get caught up by Split Earth, completely his fault, as well as being forced to commit your time lapse before, or rather after the rupture had already landed. That's just not a situation any of the Undying Cores want to be in. But the problem that still plagues me is how is this actually affecting Undying's towers? We haven't seen the Electric make that rotation. Unfortunately, top, it is just Dubu pushing out a little bit too far and getting his creeps cleaned up, something that, again, this Electric is very, very good at. You are very easily able to clean up pretty much all of the boys for free. And that's where Dubu does need to be careful with his positioning. But we aren't seeing these tier one towers fall. We're still seeing the successful defenses coming out from Undying. And that's where you really have to highlight Saberlight. Him and his Mars has really been holding down the fort, waiting for these later timings. And we're already only 2000 gold away from this Aghanim Scepter. That's where four zoomers need to be terrified whenever this Tinker actually goes down. That's where if they're not getting the vision from those rolling ins or from those rolling boulders, from those blood rites, you can't start the fight. You either get on the Tinker or you get out. There's no in between going to be forced into some tough decisions in these upcoming fights once those items have been completed. Meanwhile, Tomato well, building himself up here. Got the Maelstrom, went back for the Dragon Lance afterwards, so talked about that maybe being a little bit greedy for him, but Tomato recognizing you're going to have to keep pace with Eternal Envy here, and he is a couple hundred gold behind, but item-wise it feels like he's at least close enough to try and sort of go toe-to-toe -to -toe with his opponent, and if some of these further items comes out, you see the SNY queued up. He's got the Satanic build uh, queued up after that. So your Weaver is going to become quite a bit tankier. And some of those plays that have caught Tomato out previously in this match are going to become significantly less effective once he has that extended durability. Yep. And the same situation we always see with this Weaver. You had to go for the Sanj. You've still got to go for the Sanj, but you're not going to want to buy a BKB in this game. The pretty much the opposite of the previous game's draft for Zoomers. They want to get the BKBs this time around in Undying. They want you to get them as slowly as possible. Where nobody on Undying really wants to ever itemize for that. Saberlight kind of has to buy it because there really aren't that many items that feel fantastic for Mars. It'll allow him to get a little bit deeper and not worry about that blood right silence, which will be crucial in these team fights. But he's going to roll in. Up. Oh, he missed everything, and now he's silenced. The Inkswell stun's going to knock him down. And I mean, it was an interesting attempt. It just doesn't work out. Now Gunner, he's going to try to move in, but all these teammates are trapped up inside of that arena. Dubu is still dropping low, but the hand of God oh. is going to keep him alive for now. He does eventually fall, but Rao comes in with the laser, connecting onto two. They've taken down both. They've got Gunner as well, and now Moo, he's by himself. Husky tries to push back in. He is going to use the Tumblr's toy to close that gap, but Moo is just still dropping. The missile finishes him off. Husky now has to run, but the Inkswell slows him down. Excuse me, the Stroke of Fate slows him down. The Inkswell stuns him up. The Husky will fall, and now Saberlight... Yeah, what's a Rupture going to do? Just TPs out. There's no way to cancel it from Envy, so... I mean, Z Freak. It's a nice attempt at the initiation, and if he does hit with that stun, maybe something happens, but once he misses, it just felt like the rest of four zoomers were maybe not all on the same page, and Undying will take advantage of that chaos immediately. And they waterfall in, they go in one after each other, and that is your BKB on Batrider. That is this timing that I've been hyping up for such a long time. That was double BKB. You had it on Envy and the Batrider, and they aren't able to make a successful fight? That is not a good sign. Man, they need to really ask. look back. If they're not able to get something going, that is really disastrous, because Undying, even though they aren't able to necessarily spin everything in their favor, oh, that was... Yeah, he's got to be careful top. But that was just Tomato hitting mid-tower. That was all the pressure that was put on. That was two creep waves in a Weaver, and he was able to put all the pressure in the world on your Tier 1. While you're struggling to make plays on the enemy team's mid one when you have flash track and two BKBs, mm -hmm. four zoomers they really need to check themselves. Whether they need to smoke to allow Z Freak to get a little bit closer, or they need to lead off with a rupture, something needs to change, and it needs to change fast because Ags is up on Tinker. This is no longer the time to play around. If you start taking these fights for way too long, 
he is going to rip you apart. He has the shrink ray. He's got really good levels too. This is not looking very good for zoomers at all. Got to try and make a move here. They've spotted out Moon Meander. That would be a nice kill, but... Well, actually, they're kind of splitting the focus a little bit. They want it onto Dubu as well, and I think they are going to get away with both of these. Dubu goes down first. Moon, not dead just yet. He's got some wand charges as well, but I'm not really sure that's enough. Gunner, yeah, hits him up with a flame break. That will get the kill. So, four zoomers needed a move. They smoke up as five. They get both of the supports, and that's going to have to be enough for now. They don't really have any plays onto any of the core heroes, but you do see them sort of eyeing up the Roche Pit a little bit, and well, they're going to give it a go. They actually do a pretty substantial amount of damage, so they are burning through it rather quickly and maybe so quickly that undying won't be able to respond we do see their heroes starting to come over nice though ward will they commit Saberlight is under that ward as you pointed out but the blink is still going to be a threat brow's coming in now as well throwing the missiles in there that's actually kind of chunking away at the health on those cores and yeah four zoomers have to back out of the pit but with roche down to maybe a third of its hp there is the threat that undying could get in there and actually snag it for themselves so four zoomers don't want to commit for it but they also can't afford to back away entirely right now we've got a bit of a stalemate developing but now you've given all of the momentum over to the undying side they're able to deward you they're able to reset their high ground now they're going to stick these chen creeps in the pit they're never going to let four zoomers take this without a fight and it all comes down to what z freak is Smoke's able to popping. find here we go gunner pops the bkb needs the lasso down onto somebody z freak being all rolling in they've caught out saber light but the arena does still come through there's going to be the ult coming out from husky though will it provide enough they're trying to fight their way through this as they've taken Saberlight down. Moon Meander's going to be falling as well. Moo getting both of those kills in the Undying attack. Really just getting sort of broken up here as Tomato, he was sort of caught out a little bit further to the east, trying to hide out in the river. The time lapse actually doesn't even keep him alive as he will still fall, but he does immediately buy back. And that buyback is enough to sort of make four zoomers have some second, second thoughts, excuse me, about going back in for Roshan. But that was a very well taken fight by four zoomers and... E.T., you talked about that BKB being so important. Last time, he didn't really get to have it factor in. This time, the BKB breaks up the initiation on the Undying side, and four Zoomers get three kills. And even more crucial there, you had the pull from Z Freak. You absolutely ruined Saberlight's initiation. Wasn't able to get a spear off. Got a death rattle, God's rebuke, but that was about it. He got absolutely nothing. Even though the arena was very well placed, you have the double BKB. You're able to push through it regardless. And you're able to get on these backline heroes where if both the Bat Rider and the Bloodseeker are chained together, they love it because they run in the wind, feeling it in their hair. There's nothing that you can really do to stop them at that point. And they had to buy back on Tomato. If they don't buy back there, they do just get the Roche on the four zoomer side. But it almost feels like four zoomers are toying with their opponents. They say, well, we're, we, we're the team that can take Roche. You can't take Roche even if you buy back here. So NVTP's bottom gets so much more farm in the bank. Now he's got a full Skull Basher. It feels like four zoomers are really playing nicely around this pit. They're really forcing their opponents. And they're finally forcing their opponents to react to them. Where the first 15 minutes of this game, I was definitely feeling a little bit scared. Z Freak. That is a very oh, forward maneuver. Split. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Well. self using though. Maybe that buys. Nope. Saberlight's in there for the spear stun. So, yeah. If you're Z Freak, that is unfortunate, but those are the plays you need to have him try to make, trying to reestablish control and vision up on that high ground. So, his death is not great, but I don't really think it's going to hurt Four Zoomers too badly. Death timer's about 30 seconds. They still have relative control around the pit, but you see Undying. Well, maybe feeling a little bit more confident. Saberlight's kind of looking for stuff in that middle lane. Doesn't want to get too close, though, with both Envy and Boo here, but... I don't know. Four Zoomers didn't go for Roshan, and now both sides are kind of eyeing it up once again. And it, it's so stupid that Tinker just gets to farm Ancients now. It's really just wild to watch uh, Tinker just have AoE laser. But that's where it really does feel like Undying are forced to play around this pit. They have to keep at least one Chen Creep in there. Envy's been doing a really annoying job, actually, of throwing a blood right just to get the vision, just having the knowledge. Because unless Undying are comfortable with Brow sitting in that pit, you're never going to see this Tinker feel comfortable enough to actually laser Roche. And without that, they simply don't have enough damage to take it for themselves. So it's an aspect that four zoomers can play around with complete confidence. There's no way for Undying to ever smoke in or, or finish it off. Brow's not on a TA. We don't have an Ursa. There's no sneakiness coming out from Undying. They're really Envy. open and shut. Yeah. Silence okay. goes down, but not before he drops the Rupture onto Dubu. Dubu will look for the TP. Z Freak actually misses um. him with the roll. Wow. He was trying for Tomato, so the aim is a little bit off on both counts. And Chen this gets away. Bad. Do they actually turn this one around? That's going to be the... Oh, oh God. Um, the GA came out, but 
Tomato ends up dying. He does trade himself out for two, but it's just the two supports. This is getting a little bit awkward, but Saberlight jumps in. They'll get the kill onto Moo. That's going to sort of even up that tally a little bit more. And now Gunner, all of a sudden, he's here with no backup. Does he have a TP? Yes, he does. BKB should hold long enough. Yeah, he's going to be able to get himself out of there. But that, that was weird, ET. I mean, yeah, Tomato goes down, but three kills go undying's way in exchange. I think you're kind of okay with that. And you don't lose the Batrider or the Bloodseeker. I really don't think you're too conscious about it, but it does feel strange. It, at the same time, we see Tomato get clipped by another Split Earth, another thing that I really don't think should be happening, but until he has this BKB, he doesn't have a way to dispel that silence. That's one thing that even though Z Freak botched the initiation just a little bit there onto Dubu, not able to cancel his TP with either the Boulder or the Yules, you did hit the silence onto the Weaver, and that's all that mattered. If he got that time lapse off, I think you honestly trade four for nil at that point. But fighting into this vision for Zoomers, they were able to charge up the hill, get the Observer planted, and they still lose the fight. It just feels like there's still something missing from the four zoomer side. I like what they're doing. I like how they're forcing their opponents to play. And really, I like that Moo is going for this blink dagger. If he can get on top of Brile, they still aren't having that threat where this Tinker just feels like there's no one to catch him. There's no one that's actually actively looking for him just yet. Saberlight. Ooh, oh, okay. he didn't staple. There's gonna be the... Huh. Excuse me? No lasso. All right, cool. Uh, Lasso's on cooldown. That's always fun. Saberlight, though, he wants in. Inkswell's on him, looking for the stun, connecting it onto two. There's going to be the leash coming out as well from the Soulbind as they take Husky out of the fight right away. And now Envy is running out of time on that BKB. Going to have to be a little bit careful. He did throw the Rupture onto Tomato, though, so he's not able to chase until that wears off. But Undying, okay, that's what they wanted. Four Zoomers push up onto the high ground. The fight gets a little bit messy at the start, but Saberlight's able to sort of hold his ground and... Oh, you took Husky down. He did buy back almost immediately, though, so he is back into the fight, and the Guardian Angel's coming back up here. So if you're four Zoomers, you didn't get what you wanted, but you're still in a position to try and contest if another fight breaks out. So that's something Undying will have to be very much aware of. You had an advantage, but not enough of one where four Zoomers are just going to entirely back away. Unfortunately, and that's where the Gold Lead does always crawl back to the Undying side, you do see Brile now having time to break into those side lanes. He's level 18. He is at full force. If a fight goes down where wards are planted, Undying are just going to win it. There is going to be way too much damage coming out from this Tinker and something that they still have yet to really figure out. I think a big reason why that play doesn't go worse for four Zoomers is because Saberlight had already committed that arena. Otherwise, I do think we would see the punish be a little bit more immediate, but now they still have to be careful. Everything is about this Roche, and the worst part about it is it's just the first Roche. There's really not that much. It's just an Aegis that really wouldn't allow either team to do very much. Maybe you give Tomato a second life. Maybe you give either the Life Tracker or Eternal Envy a little bit more leeway when they hit those Tier 1 towers, but this Aegis doesn't change much but you can't allow either side to get it. That's why this game really feels awkward because we are just seeing this Tinker able to spiral out of control, get all of his timings uncontestedly, and there's no real breaching play. Once you have maybe a little bit more time, even Saberlight, Saberlight's level 19. He's just so big on this Mars, but he can't do anything. If he ever expends his cooldowns in a way that isn't explicitly getting him something, you're, they're going to go into the pit. So it's such a strange game that it's boiling down to. At least we are getting a Blink Dagger now on Gunner. If he can find another big lasso, that would be a way to break open the fight. But neither team's giving any headway. No team is really pulling the string in either direction. There is a smoke, but it's not going to find anything, I don't think. Yeah, Tomato, though, does now have the BKB up. So that could be a potential difference maker for them. But... The items are great on both sides. It's just, as you said, this weird stalemate. Who is willing to or even has the capacity to make that sort of aggressive move right now? If you win it, great. It breaks the game open. But if you take that fight and you lose, you have just completely surrendered control of the momentum in this match. So that hesitance is really seeping into every aspect of this game outside of just farming. We do see pretty much the cores on both sides. 
trying to take advantage of this time. Gunner, though, there's the blink jumping in, getting onto Dubu. Can they lock him down? Need a little bit more damage to finish him off as they try to pull him across the river. They don't actually get him up onto the high ground, though. Dubu still alive. Pops the, oh god, pops the hand of god as well as the pipe. He's up, and now Tomato, he just goes straight in onto Envy. They find the kill. Moon's gonna get taken down as well. Tomato picks up the double kill. This is an absolute disaster for four zoomers. Moon is gonna be able to send up Z-Freak, finishing him off while further up the middle lane. Husky and Gunner are just on the run. Tomato, I mean, he just had the perfect opening there. He uses Dubu as a distraction. Saberlight blinks in for the arena, and the Weaver just zeroes in on Envy as his target and takes him down so quickly. Yeah, and you're not able to find any rebuttal. You have to now wait. You have to wait for your cooldowns. Gunner's trying to go for the steal. Maybe he has the vision coming in from the napalm, but if he messes up here, he's just another death. He is another player to just be killed here. Dying they're actually even doing the change up. Yeah, they're looking for him. Yeah, he's so scared, but this is going to secure the Roche now. They just go in and they get it for free at this point. Wiser play from Undying. Just run Gunner off there, make sure there's no way that he can go for that sort of blink in. So, Roshan gets taken. Aegis into the hands of Tomato, and uh, this Weaver is going to start becoming even more of a problem. We were talking about the durability for him. The SNY came out, but rather than go for the Satanic afterwards as he had originally queued up, the damage focus coming out now. The crit stick has been finished off and is being delivered to him. So, damage output on this Weaver. We already saw what he was capable of doing in that previous fight. If he's left alone on the target he wants, it's only going to hit even harder moving forward. Yeah, and I really think that the struggle is only beginning. You have that Hex now completed up on Brile. He's going to make a trip towards that Secret Shop whenever he finds the time. And these talents, they just get more obnoxious, whether he's going to get that heat-seeking missile stun that we usually see, or I would not even mind if he went for that laser damage because he's just outputting so much. And for Zoomers, despite all of the time, all of the butting heads that was happening around that Roche pit, they weren't able to find the items that they need to get on top of this Tinker. If they never make Brow sweat, he's just able to do everything for his team in these fights. Now you have the Scythe of Ice. Any time that a hero splits off to these sign lanes like Z-Freak or Gunner, you are going to have the setup where you are going to get chain stunned 100 to 0, and there's nothing you can do about it. These fights are going to continue to get worse, and I love the smoke up. Now they're going to look for your objectives. They find any kills. Midwave is already in. It's going to be another tower. And you can see four zoomers don't know if they saw or guessed, but they're already sort of clearing away from the middle lane and this east side jungle. So whether it's direct vision or just good instinct from them, they are not going to get themselves caught out. But they do now have a little bit of vision uh, thanks to Gunner losing his courier. That's not great for him, but at least they know somebody was hanging out in the area. But very quickly, you see Tomato TP himself top, so they're almost trying to sort of bait their opponents in as Gunner... Blinks himself away, not going to get caught just yet, looking for the TP home. Can Tomato catch up? He can, but he doesn't really have any way to cancel that TP. So, good play in from Envy, getting himself out of that fight, and Undying may not be finding these kills, but as you were mentioning before, in the middle lane, they're pushing things out, and now that's going to start applying to the side lanes as well. Tomato's pushing top, meanwhile down bot, and they are looking for Z-Freak. Earth Spirit's going to be able to roll away, but Moonmander blinks in. Self-Yules, though, will keep Earth Spirit alive for now, but the second he lands, that's going to be the Spear Stun. They've got the Ink Swell down as well, so really, yeah, Z-Freak's not getting out of that one. Saberlight picks up the kill, and now they can push the bottom lane, too. Yeah, and without any tier 1 tower here, it's not like Undying are too pressed to make this play, but that's the issue. They can make plays. For Zoomers, they need to get set up. They're moving as a unit. They're playing the Envy style, but they're falling behind so much. And you see four heroes. They feel like they need to play together because they need to, to just to put pressure onto a tier one tower that really nobody cares about at this point. Meanwhile, in Dying, they get to push in the mid wave. They get to push in the bot wave. If anybody wanted to, they could farm their entire jungle with complete safety. It's not like they can necessarily smoke all the way over. I think this Tinker is becoming way too big of a problem. You even see Brian feel comfortable enough to come over here. Saber Maybe the bait. Okay. okay, BKB. Heavenly Grace and BKB coming out. Lasso now deployed. Saberlight needs backup. They are TPing onto the tower. The problem is that Lasso is deployed. No one can follow it up. They're all just leaving. And Saberlight, I don't think he's going to be able to hit this. He needs that blink. Okay, tried for it. Not able to hit with a spear. And Moo's going to stun him up just for good measure. But that's the thing for four zoomers. That is Saberlight. TPing onto a tower. Sure, he has the ink swell on him, so that's a little bit of a help, but the reality of it is, Saberlight jumped into about a 1v3, maybe 4, and there's zero consequences. In fact, four zoomers are the one who have to clear out of the top lane in its entirety. 
Exactly. And then the reset happens. They have to push out the bot lane. They have to watch out the mid lane. And oh, it's a nice knockback. Can oh. he get him? The Yules? He got it. Ryle is in some serious trouble here. Can he get himself out? Nope. He's immediately going to get silenced up, stunned as well. And that's the play that four zoomers needed. The clear out from the top lane now actually looks quite a bit better because it got them that rapid rotation down bot while the rest of Undying, well, they are pushing out the top lane and they can't get the tier two. Now they're looking for kills. So maybe this is still going to work out for them as they're in onto Envy. Envy though, popping the BKB, trying to fight his way out of this. He did hit up Tomato and uh, Tomato is just going to have to hold his ground there, wait for the rupture to wear off, but needs to make sure he's far enough away from Mu to not be taking that bonus damage as Mu tried to push in, but there's going to be the spear knocking him down. He's locked up with the tree and now uh, Gunner. Gunner has a BKB. Yeah, he's going to have to pop it, but he doesn't have the Firefly. Uh, well, actually, he had the Firefly going, excuse me, as he is able to jump in, but this is getting a very, very complicated. They're trying to go for Saberlight oh, no. here, but where's the damage? They just can't finish him off. Meanwhile, Z-Freak doing his best to create a distraction on that back line, and technically speaking, he will be successful. Actually, more than successful. He just rolled away. He's going to be perfectly fine. The Guardian Angel comes out from Husky, and somehow this engagement is still going. Gunner's looking for some sort of way onto the back line, but not going to have his opening while Tomato just goes straight down their throats. Husky taken out. And it looks like we're finally going to see that fight come to an end. But there are about three or four points there where it looked like one side or the other was about to swing things their way. And then it really just doesn't uh, end up unfolding. The fight just carries on. But Undying, in the end, yeah, they get away. They lose Brile in that sort of previous engagement. But outside of that, not too bad for them. Yeah, and all without the Tinker. That is the only problem I see for him as well as now Brile picking up an Arcane room. Anyone that shows without somebody behind him is actually going to die with this arcane rune. But they need to be still very conscious. I think Ryle, when he broke towards that bottom lane, was getting a little bit greedy. And that's the moment where I'm dying. They play in three lanes at the same time. You're always going to get punished when that happens. You do need to be very conscious of that going forward. But you are hitting some very scary timings. And even though you were able to get Brow in the bottom lane, Saberlight is an absolute monster on this Mars with this overwhelming blink. Post BKBs, you can't fight him. There's absolutely nothing you can do versus him. You need to kill him either with Rupture, with pulling him. I'm actually surprised that four Zoomers have never felt comfortable enough to do that lasso into Rupture play or even the Rupture kick. I don't think we've seen these heroes really play off each other as much as I would have liked to see. And there is a lot of damage to be done in that Rupture that I think a lot of these heroes are very simply shrugging off. But Tomato is now the monster and well, Benvy, Nice interrupt. They're not able to hit him up just yet. Gunner makes the move first. Good play. They're on to Brile. Can they take him down? Yes, they can. Brile dead. Tomato. Uh, he is still holding his ground here, but the bashes are starting to come through. He needs reinforcements, and uh, reinforcements are on their way. Dubu's making his way in. Or Envy's the one who's dropping as Tomato needs to hit him up maybe one or two more times. There's going to be the right click coming through, and it's the stroke of fate from Moon that actually gets the job done as Envy will fall, but the fight is still going. Dubu now getting stunned up, but Moo doesn't really have any backup here. Z-Freak and Husky get a little bit too far away, and now they have to try and get out. Z-Freak rolls out, but unfortunately that means Husky is really just left right in the dead center of that fight, and they do a fantastic job of getting Bryle first, but beyond that point, everything falls apart. Envy had to fall back, and without that Bloodseeker, the rest of the lineup really doesn't have the damage to keep that fight going across that extended duration. And now you're going to see them start to push up the high ground. They have the frenzy. They've got the really strong Chen creeps. Another timing that now Chen gets to play around. You have ancient creeps on Chen without having to wait for a level 20 talent. The hero just feels really nice. These creeps are just able to hit up. They all do a ton of damage. And without buybacks, or at least without wanting to commit any buybacks, this is a really scary situation. As well as you see Saberlight waiting in the wings. He's just going to start right-clicking up these buildings as well. Oh, there's the blink in, forcing the BKB. Moon Meander, though, he actually blinks in as well, throwing the Ink Swell onto Saberlight, but this is really just for the purposes of finishing off the racks. They will be able to do just that, and now if you're Gunner, now you have to think twice about pushing into any other fight. With the BKB down, there's just very little defensive capability for him. Yeah, and every single time you see Saberlight commit his BKB, you are getting the return BKB out of a 4 Zoomers player, whether it is that Leshrac or the Bloodseeker. But the big problem I'm having is this Weaver is getting to a point where Eternal Envy cannot deal at all. He is not able to right-click 1v1 versus Tomato, and he's working on Satanic of his own. Maybe once you have that, I'll see a little bit of a glint of hope in this matchup. But this was another fight where you lost Brile basically instantly. You were not able to protect your Tinker at all. We might even see him uh, take the Aegis. I see Tomato slotted it out, so 
maybe not, but this Weaver is now becoming the true problem that you're going to have to deal with. And if they're unable to, you have the Shard now as well on the Weaver. You're getting so much vision from that Swarm that he puts down consistently. And you look at the Talent Tree on Weaver now, this Geminate hurts so much. It actually does so much for this hero. And with this Daedalus on top of it, all of the items that Tamana is able to amass, it just feels like he's the killer. Any hero that tries to step up to him is going to die. We haven't seen anything come out from Moo in a very long time. It feels like four zoomers are stalling with their items, stalling with their map control. Saber and again, just jumped. Didn't even have to use his own BKB. And there's one down. So now they get to go top for free. This is just not a good situation. Four zoomers are just kind of getting led around by the nose here. They really don't have a lot that they can do proactively speaking. They have to respond to the maneuvers on the undying side. And that gets so much more complicated, especially with Saberlight. He's got nearly 4k HP. There is very little that he's afraid of. As you see him just jump right into the middle of multiple heroes. That's going to force another BKB out, but they did get onto Moon Manor. Maybe they can get the Grimstroke out of this fight early, take away the threat of that Dark Portrait as they do exactly that. Z Freak, though, does end up going down, immediately buying back. They're trying now to get onto Bryle, but Bryle holding his ground, sending out the laser. Z Freak and Envy both go down. They do get Bryle in exchange, but I don't know if that's going to be enough. Tomato and Saberlight, they're just going to push their way forward. They're in onto Z Freak. That Earth Spirit dangerously low. He is going to be able to roll himself out of there. Now Gunner wants back in. Dodging the Spear. Tomato, though, wants to get onto him, but the knockback is going to be there. Tomato now, though, healing up with the Satanic. He's going in for another round of fighting. Can he catch up to anyone? Not initially, but he is still pushing his way forward. If he can't get a hero, maybe he can get damage onto the racks, but... Uh, you see four Zoomers just sort of hanging out around him, desperately trying to set up for some sort of play, but... Tomato really doesn't seem to care right now. He has the Aegis, so even if he does go down, it's just going to be the first death. They are going to kick him back into the stun, though. But, I mean, look at Tomato. He doesn't care. The Satanic is back up again. Saberlight now blinks forward, going for the Spear, pushing Mu away from the fight, and the racks have been exposed. Yep, they just can't deal with the Weaver anymore. It's just waiting to see when he gets a crit. He crit Mu there for 1,100 damage. Now he's going to have um, full Mjolnir going to be completed in just a few moments oh, here. And here's the fight on a Dubu, but... They roll in. Can they get him? Dubu's already used pretty much all of his healing, but Saberlight is going to respond to the arena. That's going to break the fight up. Z-Freak, though, not dead just yet, so instead they go for Husky. Saberlight wants that kill. We'll be able to get it with a review. Dubu does get sacrificed, but now Husky buying back. Lasso comes in. They're going to try to lock Saberlight down. They do have the damage to kill him off, and now... I believe that's the cue to leave for the Weaver, but he is still pushing his way forward, using the time-lapse to get some of that HP back, but I think he really should leave. Z-Freak is going to roll in onto him, though, and they burn through him. That's the first life gone. There's no one here to help him. Moonmander is trying to TP mid, but he's not going to get there in time. Tomato, though, again, should have known better. He doesn't care. He pops the BKB. He turns around. He takes down Z-Freak. He hit, uh, crits down Husky, and now Envy getting hit by the crit as well. He's got to fall back. Oh, no. Even when you think Tomato's in danger, he just knows exactly what's going down. Everything's going according to plan for him. He might want to be a little careful now, but with the Satanic, he's going to heal right back up, and Moo is actually the one in some trouble. He's going to get hit up by the Silence, dropped down, taken out. Tomato just rampaging his way through absolutely everything. Four Zoomers just can't seem to mount enough of a response to get through him. And Moo blinks in. You have to get damage onto this Weaver. You're one of the few stunners, but Tomato knows exactly the type of game that he's in. As soon as that Earth Spirit is off the board, he doesn't need to be afraid that he doesn't have to have BKB. He doesn't need to be afraid really of anyone at that point. If he knows that Lasso and Earth Spirit are off the table, those are the two stuns. That's what they've identified. Now he's got a DD bottled. He's going to be critting for... 1500 1600 damage and the satanic it just feels like there's way too much leverage that tomato has if he really wanted to he's got that scotty queued up i don't even think we're going to get to that aspect of the game yet they still don't have bimax on their heroes they could be forced here if they really needed to throw eternal envy at the weaver because he's coming for your tier fours he knows Yo, you don't have glyph those towers the game could just, just end here gone melts oh, his no. way through them <laughs> And four Zoomers, you gotta go. You are running out of time. There's gonna be a nice Rupture play, though, into the Lasso, pulling the Weaver in. Can they finish him off? Refreshing the Lasso to go in a second time. Even the Hand of God isn't Ooh. enough. Tomato's dead. Big plays there from four Zoomers. They absolutely needed that kill. Now, though, they need more. They're gonna try to get onto Bryle or Moonmander. Not able to catch up to either one of them just yet, but Gunner looking for his opening. Saberlight, though, drops the arena, but the BKB comes out. Gunner not gonna get locked down. Instead, he's gonna focus in on the Grimstroke. Said Grimstroke knocked back by the flame break, but still getting himself away while Saberlight is trying to sort of control things on that front line. The BKB is now gonna come out. Meanwhile, you do have another jump in outside of the base. Moonmander is going to be taken down, or maybe not. The stun actually comes through, heals himself up, but it's not actually enough. He will fall. Moon does take down uh, does take down Husky while all of that was happening, but at this point, it does feel like Undying 
are going to have to back themselves away. Saberlight, though, he's still getting chased. Gunner sidesteps the spear. But at this point, I'm not really sure he can go for this kill. Without the lasso, Saberlight honestly might just look to TP out. But with Brawl coming back in, they actually want to turn. Trying to go onto the bat, but moves in there to help. Seafreak rolling forward as well. Spear stun comes out, locking down the Leshrac as this fight is somehow still going on. Dooku's actually made his way over here as well as the buyback will come in from Moon Meander. So they really are looking to go again as Saberlight jumps in. He does get hit up by the Yules initially, but he is still pushing his way forward. Spear comes out, doesn't lash the tree though. So Moo is going to just get pushed back. He's okay for now. And four Zoomers will finally call the retreat, but that was a very tense situation. Obviously, you want to try to push forward. Maybe you can find some sort of straggler, someone lagging behind, but they needed to make sure they didn't lose anyone further themselves. Yeah, and now you are going to see the struggle. You are going to see them get pushed back. I swear that if Tomato has buyback there, the game ends. They had to use absolutely everything from Gunner, and Gunner chained it perfectly. A moment of hesitation there, he gets the time lapse off, the game ends. But instead, very calm, is able to get that rupture play out. For the first time, we got the rupture in the lasso, and it was a very, very long, very arduous lasso, but it worked. You got the damage you needed. You were able to take him off the board. I think now Tomato is going to be a little bit more cautious, but that's a play you can make every six minutes. That's not a play you can make every uh, every day of the week, and that's where for Zoomers, they bought a little bit of time, but that was with him trying to end your game. That was with a Weaver on your tier fours. This bottom Rax is still going to be very difficult for a defend. They aren't out of the woods just yet. And still, this is with Saberlight, I think, missing a lot of his spears. If he finds an initiation, he's still going to force everything out of you. There's well, here we go. They get the spear down. Moo's going to get caught first. GA, though, comes out from Husky, so that's going to absorb a fair bit of the damage. Not sure if it's enough, though. Moo is still falling. Not dead yet, though. Trying to get back to the fountain. Can they finish him off? Saberlight needs maybe one more hit as a spear will come through, but it's not going to do enough. So, Moo survives. His teammates, though, not in the greatest of positions. Seafreak does get taken down. Brawl, though, will be taken out in exchange. He immediately buybacks, buys back, though, looking to rejoin the fight. His Envy, very low on HP. He's going to get stunned up and taken down. Dude will be traded out, but at this point, these trades are not going to be good enough for four Zoomers. They've lost four. It's down to Gunner to try and save the day, but he's just going to get locked down. Hexed up. Silence is well finished off. A buyback comes through from him, but at this point, it just feels like it's too late. Saberlight is there to intercept him, blinking forward, and the GG will finally be called. It's four Zoomers. I mean, they gave it a good go there, and that was an impressive play with the lasso to catch out Tomato, but as you said, ET, they can't do it a second time. I'm dying know it, and I'm dying it to close it out. And it's still... For me, it's the issue of Undying that no team has really been able to solve yet, where you try to get a leg up in the draft, you try to amass these heroes that you feel comfortable with, you know that they're going to match up well, know that they're going to pair well with each other, but Undying identify what you lack, and then they play to that tune. Tomato, it felt like there was never a hero. As soon as he identified what he needed to play around, both cores, Brow and Tomato, never felt like they were getting into a fight that they didn't want to start. Even when Brow, he definitely he dropped the ball a little bit. He had a string of two to three deaths where he was getting caught out. He was getting pushed back. However, Tomato was the monster at that point. There was absolutely no one that was able to stand up versus him. And he really carried this game. I think he had a slow start. He, We said in that early game, maybe three deaths that he really didn't need to give away. But you get to this point where he continuously is able to carry these team fights for you. And I got to bring it back to Saberlight Mars. Even though I think he was missing a few spears here and there, he was definitely going for the big spears. You can't blame a guy for that. But every single arena, you force four zoomers BKBs. And if four zoomers aren't playing really tight around that timing, I think the best shot they had in this game was really around that Roche where they were continuously forcing their opponents who couldn't take Roche yet to stick there. That's where Tomato really felt like he was going to fall behind where maybe this matchup would have been too difficult for him. But as soon as that Roche fight goes their way, Tomato eclipses Eternal Envy and Net Worth and then the matchup becomes just unable for Eternal Envy to win. Every single time Eternal Envy tried to hit the ruptured Weaver, Tomato with the Satanic hit right back and he won. Just really fantastic performance, I think, strategically and in-game from everyone on the Undying side. Mm -hmm. Undying knew what they needed to do. They knew, basically, we have two halves to the game plan. One, wait until we hit our timings later in the game. Two, don't fall so behind early that we can't make that comeback later, right? And for Zoomers, they did better this time around compared to game number one, but it still feels like, once again, they needed to play faster. They needed to be more aggressive. They needed to be able to establish control in that first 20, 25-minute sort of area, and really, they didn't. Uh, taking a look sort of at the net worth and experience graphs in the aftermath of that game, they were actually behind around that time in the match. So 
you put yourself in a rough position when you build to be on the offensive early and you don't really manage to do that. And we mentioned it in Undying's last series. If you give them an opening, if you allow them to get out in front of you, they will very rarely give you the opportunity to then come back afterwards. Yeah, and I think now for Zoomers, watch what your opponents do in this next series. Really pay close attention. I think four Zoomers are a team that can definitely take games off of these big boys. They're one of the dark horses, I think, in this tournament, at least coming into it. You say that now, they've gotten as far as they have, but really solidify, watch what everybody's doing. There's a bunch of Dota tournaments going on. See what the big dogs in the world are doing and then try to steal some of their ideas. I think they really had something here. They just weren't able to pull it off. Mm hmm yeah, and to be fair, the further we go into the patch, I think the more those ideas are going to sort of solidify, the bad ones will get thrown out, the good ones will be iterated upon. But for now, four Zoomers do end up dropping the series. They're not out of it just yet, though. As uh, ET was mentioning, they now get to watch our next series. It is going to be Infamous versus No Ping. The winner of that best of three faces four Zoomers in the lower bracket finals tomorrow. So we've got some SA Dota now to follow up the North American matchup, and four Zoomers going to be very much interested to see which of those two squads they will be playing against. For now, though, uh, we are going to be moving into a bit of a break. Second series will be coming up. Uh, don't go anywhere, though. We are doing, I believe, uh, a giveaway courtesy of Mate Mate. So we're going to step away for just a moment, uh, run you through some of those good old-fashioned ads, and then we'll be back uh, for that giveaway in just a bit. So stick around, and we'll let you know what's going on with that in just a few moments. <laughs> 